Welcome back to another We Are Sunderland Morning Briefing and this one is another special edition with highlights from the Sunderland Till I Die Premier. We sat down with Ben Turner, for well 73 ahead of the Premier for a deep dive into the eagerly anticipated third series. If you haven't watched Series 3 yet, head over to Netflix and give it a watch as there may be one or two spoilers in this episode and no, we don't mean the result at Wembley. You can still subscribe to our website Launch Offer with six months of coverage available for just £1. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like the video, comment, share and turn your notification bell on. That's enough from me. Let's get into the video. Hello and welcome back to another We Are Sunland recording in partnership with the Farm Museum. It's myself, Matt Hewitt, Joe Ramage, and today we're joined by uh, the brilliant Ben Turner from Fullwell73. How are you doing, Ben? I'm great, thanks. How are you doing? Yeah, all good, all good. The weather's not great outside, but yeah, we're going to talk about Sunland, so... What better? What better is there? I, I'm guessing it's been a very busy sort of period for you with, with the launch of the new series is coming up. But how have you seen the last sort of couple of weeks and now that we we're here and, and it's about to be released? Oh, it's great. It's great. I mean, obviously some until I die is hugely uh, personal and important to us. Um, and it's, yeah, it's amazing to see it go back out in the world. It really is a thing that, you know, is, is meaningful, not just to Sunderland fans, but, you know, beyond. And uh, it's, it, it, I, I love nothing more than talking about Sunderland. So, if I can, the more of my working day spent doing that, the better. Especially talking, especially talking about promotion uh, beforehand. Yeah, I mean, I suppose we'll come on to that in a second. But just in terms of the series as a whole, I, I know obviously you have your hand in plenty of other documentaries and shows before this. But it, it feels like this one in particular was sort of the start of a trend for these kind of sport and documentaries coming out. We've seen a lot in the years since that have followed this path. Is that something that you are proud of? How do you see that, the way that we've seen some of these documentaries? I mean, you look at the Wrexham one, for example, that one, they say that it's inspired by this one. Yeah, absolutely. It's great, man. I feel very proud of that. I mean, there have been a few very lucky trends in the world of TV in our time as filmmakers that have sort of broken favourably for us. And one of them has definitely been the rise of sports docs. And I mean, you know, but I think when we were, when we were a lot younger, documentaries were a bit like homework and for people to watch and in our time they've become entertainment and fun mm -hmm. and sport sports are great for documentaries because a lot of the time you can be following someone and you're obviously at the mercy of events and if nothing's happening you're in a bind whereas you do, if you follow a sports team they play a game every week so everyone whatever happens people are going to succeed or fail in a very measurable and binary fashion so it's really it, it, it's quite it's quite obviously a good way good world to make documentaries in but it took a while for it to catch on and we've been lucky to be a part of that process yeah i mean you talk about events as well Sunderland's a club that certainly has had its events over the last couple of years but as fans as well it, it must have been almost surreal i guess to go behind the curtain and, and try and bring that out given, I mean, what was the sort of lowest point of, of the club's history, really, I think it's fair to say. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I didn't, after the second season, I didn't watch football for about a year. and I didn't really watch football until the Euros. I just couldn't take it anymore. Because I basically, the end, what you want at the end of one of those seasons is to try and forget about it for a bit and then yeah. you can convince yourself that next year we're going to go up, you know. Whereas I would have to go to an edit suite and watch and rewatch that footage over and over again, and then try and distill it into its most painful form, and then say, "Is that making? Is everyone finding that painful and, and emotional enough? No, not quite. All right, put some sadder music on it." And so, by you know, by the, it really emotionally beat me up, uh, and it took a bit of a while to to recover from that. Getting to getting to show this season that we showed in the uh, in, in in the series in series three was definitely uh, much more enjoyable. It. Yeah, how many times did you watch that winning Charlton goal through Griffith oh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, you know, and also in all the trailers and the commentary, I mean, just, you know. So so did that stem you, like, did you think that you would have done a third season at that point just to try and get that redemption arc almost, think, right, we've, we've been here, this has been relegation, and then we missed out so close. Yeah. It was always in the back of your mind to think, no, we need to keep, need to do where, the point where we get the high of, yeah. of a promotion. I definitely wanted to show Sunderland fans celebrating. You know, I think I do think the part of what people love about it is watching people suffer. Because <laughs> uh, really, really, we've got me, me and Gabe and, and Leo have, have, and the rest of the team have many chats about you know 
about well about football in general and sport in general and we come to the conclusion considering only one team ever wins the league or the competitive cup competition or whatever like the football must be about more than winning and so a lot of our stuff is like well what is that and i think you know community the catharsis of it all was was very super interesting to explore but ultimately as Sunderland fans it's also really nice <laughs> to see Sunderland fans happy and to see us on top of the world um, and understand, I think that um, what well, well, that that moment at Wembley meant. Because for many years, this is something that Mike Gabe was said to me really. But that you know, in the in the past, certainly when when we had, when we when we got relegated to the old Division Three and went up in '88, it was a bit like it was it was great fun. But there was a sense of like we do not belong there. And so yeah, it's, it's brilliant we got promoted, but let's not go let's not go over the board over let's not get get carried away with that we, we're back where we, you know we don't belong there and i think you know when, i remember when we went up with kino the first time he was like there's no open top parade we belong in the premier league and i like i like that attitude too yeah. we, we cut a line of commentary when some when we get promoted at the end of season three where the commentators go some are back where they belong i'm like we are not back where we belong <laughs> premier league is where we belong this is so so there's that, but 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 I sort of came to understand through the making of this that it really football's about moments, you know, and about these little these pockets of joy that you have, uh, and where everyone's together. And it's you know I, I think I actually the moment where we the, the the winner against Sheffield Wednesday almost was it was all, you know in a different way, as great as Wembley, you know. And I, I was I was thinking also recently because I've been talking about this a lot, Luton Town at home at the end of last year. You know, when we just knew we were going to get back in it, and the moment, you know, it was just that's great. You're just there, you're loving, you're loving life, and you know it's going to happen. Um, so the 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 kind of the the opportunity to to put that on screen was very exciting and unmissable for us. Obviously, throughout this series, you obviously speak with there was a change in ownership in between the two series. You get to speak with once a Tory yeah. and, and Kirill. I mean. Again, you've sort of done what even even the media sort of haven't been able to do the mainstream media because it's yeah. been so so kept behind closed doors. How was it interacting with them? Because again, it's having watched it, you, you get a real insight into Kirill as a human being, and, and yeah. it's it's something that I think hasn't you know it hasn't sports haven't been able to resonate with that. But I feel like they can when when you watch it. Yeah, well, that in a way is part of what our job is. I think, like you know, we, when you're making one of these shows. Obviously, the football's amazing and the dressing room's amazing. There's a load of things that are going to, unless you're totally incapable, are going to be amazing or interesting and captivating. So it's like, what are you going to add to it? How are you going to do it properly? And a guy like Kirill, he's, you know, he's quiet and he can come, and, and English is his second language, and he can come a, he can come across quite flat. But he's a really interesting, like, he's a really interesting guy. He's a really nice guy. He's thought about it, things a lot. Uh, and it's, I think when we have a little bit more time to sort of de- to, to chat to them and develop that relationship a bit. And weirdly, you want to tell the other story. And, and if they're going to do it, they use you on board to tell something a bit deeper about why he actually cares about it, why it's meaningful for him, you know, and, and, and what's in it. And I, for, for me, there was a thing right at the beginning when I first met him and I was chatting to him about it. He said to me, we were talking about them sacking B. Johnson. And he said that he felt that, because at the time it was it felt a little bit trigger happy and mm-hmm. i was asking we were talking about it and he said that we there's no point finish there's no difference between finishing third and sixth in this league like it, it, it's playoff if you but you're better off going into the playoffs with momentum than yeah. limping into it and he was like at that point i felt that like we weren't going up automatically we just the way we, we were playing we were get, we were getting cut adrift it wasn't just that we got beat we got thumped at, at, at bolton but he was like, if I'm going to do something, I'm better off doing it now. And then if we have a wobble, that's okay. Because as long as we can recover in time to make the playoffs and, we, and go into it with momentum, that's the best scenario. And I was like, oh, he's really thought about it. I was like, this is a guy, you know, he's really thought about it. And, I, and it really made sense. And it's that, you know, getting to that kind of place where you can talk properly. And I suppose where, where a lot of the interviews they do, they're a bit like, oh my God, what are they going to ask me there? It's like they, they, sort of, they feel like they're the, the people are out to get them. Whereas if you've got a little bit more time and you have a few bites at the cherry and you can develop that relationship a bit, then you can access something a bit more interesting. Yeah, it's like the guard drops almost, isn't it? And yeah, particular yeah. with one Satori, he's he's somebody who has remained in the background. I found what he said about Roy Keane fascinating. I mean, if you yeah. look back at those conversations, how, how did they sort of come about? 
Do you mean how with with Juan or with or they, well, with know? both? Yeah, yeah. Was it yeah. easy to get Juan in, involved in in talking because he's somebody that that has remained in the background for for the large yeah. sort of period of his time at the club? Yeah, he was up for it. I mean, they they know the value of the series. Mm. Like, you know, that Sunderland wouldn't have I would, probably wouldn't have the international footprint that they do without the series. So. And you know they want the club to be worth as much as possible and and have that profile, so they're on board with you know doing it. And he's very gregarious, Juan. I mean, he's great fun. He's great fun, and he's he's a great talker. Um, so yeah, well, once they were doing it, and again, they felt that they can trust us, then then yeah, they seem to be pretty happy to open up. As you say, there obviously the third series is is the pinnacle, isn't it, compared to the two that that came beforehand? I think sometimes for Sunderland supporters, they they look back on. On the two series and when they win league one through no fault of anyone involved but it, it became a bit of a, a stick didn't it to to beat supporters with in the sense of you know chance of we saw you crying on the telly yeah, yeah. Well, well this time round the, yeah. the, the tears exactly. of completely different reasons aren't they exactly. absolutely and, and but i gotta tell you standing there at a Sunderland game and hearing your position fans singing i saw you crying on netflix and think i did that <laughs> it's like it was pretty, it's pretty that's i that was like that's the being like Loving football so much, but not being very good. This is basically the closest I'm ever going to get to play for Sunderland. And so, like, it was quite, I quite liked it when they were singing that. And I felt that, like, you know, as a, as a supporter of the club, to have felt that you've done something, you know, for the club like that is, is was a great buzz. The actual making of it was, was especially the editing after the series was quite was painful. But some of those moments, so it was quite. I'll be honest, it's quite special. Yeah, you talk about it, like how the series is taken the club internationally as well how yeah. important in that aspect then was it to get the community across like we see it in in this series with the with the durham uh, veterans which i thought was really good when jack Clark yeah. and patrick roberts go down there you just really see how much it means don't you week to week yeah. and what everyone kind of does and how they just sort of live for a saturday and it's really good to see the players give them back yeah. in that situation as well totally and also it's like i i it's a beautiful part of the world and people are like, there's a beautiful set of people. And you look at like, Camus is, Andrew Camus is one of the people who, who's the most gratifying in the series to tell his story, just in little increments over like over three series. You meet him in the first series and he's sort of funny. And you don't really know much about him. And then you find out that he's a veteran and you find out some of what he's, some of what he's been through. And you go to Memorial Day with him. And then, you know, and now you catch up with him in Series 3 and he's got this, you know, he's got a place to support the veterans. And it's it, it's lovely to get to just gently advance that story as you get to know these people and show that, you know, I've been asked a lot on this because, you know, we've got some other, we're trying to start a studio up in Sunderland and we've, put, we've got a, uh, an office up in Sunderland. We've got the, we describe it as a holy, trini holy trinity of global production, London, LA, Sunderland. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, but it's like when people ask me a lot, like what's so special about what about Sunderland, and it, you know it's the people, man. It's the people up there. It, 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 it's such a special part of the world, and to try and explain why I love this football club so much and why I love this part of the world so much, you've got to get into that. And they don't. They make it very easy for you because they're great and they're great on camera. And I think it's a sort of defining feature of the Northeast that people are generous with their time. And give you, you know, and what love a natter, <laughs> love, want to have a chat, you know what I mean? So, like, what you've got to put that on that is that that magic is there. It, it's a very easy win for the series. It's you know, you, you just, just open the tap and then it comes out. Yeah, how important was it to get some of those cash back? You know, think of Peter as well in, in his cab. You, you see his journey, you know, you're speaking about that, he's just there speaking. So Crazy. week in, week out from games, and then it, it, he's gone through everything that the club's gone through Absolutely. vicariously, just driving through. It's it's surreal, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's very you're, unique. But in some in Peter Farry, you're giving the world that guy who's sat by you at football all your life. That yeah. um, <laughs> that, that guy, that guy is a little bit more grown up than you. He's been there a few seasons beforehand. You know what I mean? He's that that wise old head. Like that's part of going to what Sunderland is. That is, and probably most clubs is you know those people around you who make it like. That's what I mean. You didn't go there to see them win. You went there to watch it with Peter Farrow and moan with Peter Farrow and have and celebrate with Peter Farrow and give him a hug for when we, you know, when we scored a great goal. That's like that's it. Yeah, and you speak about the people as well, and, and it, it, the, the series pulls on the heartstrings in various ways on and off the field. And one person I do just want to bring up is Louise Wellness. I think it was really yeah. touching that 
you you brought that in and, and she was included because she was such a big personality at the football club, wasn't she? Absolutely. Absolutely. And a big part of the first two series, you know, we worked really closely with her. It was she you know, she was one of the, the people we originally agreed to make the series with, like kept they weren't there, you know, by the end of it. And she was all the way through with us and not easy. You know, a lot of the time people didn't want to be filmed in their in their lowest ebb, in their most difficult moments. Um, and she had to broker a lot of that and be in the middle of it, you know. And uh, and you, when you work and you know you work, especially obviously, you know, when the club already means so much to you, but to get to work, you know, with someone like that over a few years, you they they come to mean a lot to you. And, and yeah, it felt it felt important to one of that. It was part of the story of the club. It's also you know part of our story and part of anyone who's been involved in the club story. What do you hope that or, or what is the sort of take from from this series is there a sense of finishing the story so to speak is that where yeah you feel this has gone yeah i feel like it's it's a really good third act to the other two it's not the same as the other two series and in a way it shouldn't be because the other two series are the other you know they have each of them have their own kind of mark to it um uh, but i i think more of what the sort of subtext of it and i hope this is a subtext for the whole country not just Sunderland, but as it, it, it's quite a, it's a really weird time to be alive, isn't it? The news is so depressing and like it, it, things are pretty worrying. But I felt in Sunderland that there's a, there is a regeneration happening. I think there's a there's a sense of the city when I when I I mean I grew up in London, so I see Sunderland a little bit from the outside, um, which gives a slightly different perspective on it. I feel like there's a sense in the city that that this kind of slightly dilapidated city centre isn't the focus of Sunderland now. It's like a, it, it, it's, a, it's a wider imprint. There's stuff happening beyond there. The coast is, is coming up. The city has a sense of itself a, a bit wider than it was before. And I think things are happening up in Sunderland. And I think that as you feel the club coming up a little bit and getting themselves together, I think that I think that parallels with what's happening in the, in, in the city. And I, I think that like we are a lot of the time in the kind of cultural conversation, we're motivated by fear a lot. And, you know, so you think about like, the climate and stuff, it's like they just scare the shit out of you on everything. And that's your call to arms. It's like, if we don't do this, we. but I think the hope is, 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 is a stronger motivating factor. Um, and I feel that there, I feel that like my time in, especially in this last series, I felt, it felt very hopeful to me. Um, and I hope that comes across in this series. And I hope that, like, I hope it's true. And if it's not true, I hope that by talking about it enough, we make it true. <laughs> if that makes sense, you know? Yeah. I mean, you touched on it there as well, just in terms of the impact of the club on the community. We see it through all of the series. Just, yeah, just how, how big is it? Like, when if the club's doing well, it does feel as though the entire city thrives. In, and you get that from everyone that, that's in it. And, and it is that, like, you hear people say, oh, the North East fans, they love the football. But... It's true, isn't it? I do. It's so true, and that's what that was also amazing in that Luton game. Actually, that, that Luton game last year was like it felt like we were always going to get a result because we knew we were going to get a result. You know, it, like there was a feedback loop. It wasn't. It, it was going. You know, we. It, it was. It was. It is amazing. It is amazing when it's going well. Now, I guess that's what we wanted to sort of put out there, uh, partly in the series. But yeah, it's super connected. It's very. It's very special. Is that why there's been that sort of determination to get the studios in Sunderland as well yeah that must, that must be surreal as well absolutely I, you know it, we well when we met you know we when we finished the second series of Sunderland till I die and we were and we were going to have a bit of a break it was pretty depressing watching what was a brilliant production team like we get to do all the interviews but there's a lot of very dedicated and brilliant people that make this show and go you know and and, and the University of Sunderland is a fantastic place and the course there is amazing um and then we finished it. And so there's a lot of talent coming through. And then we watched the team break apart after we made that second series. And everyone, if they want to carry on working in the industry, they probably have to move down south or at least travel a hell of a lot for work, all the people who worked on it. And that didn't feel right. And we've spent, we've all heard it around, you know, what it used to be and the coal mines and the shipbuilding. And we know there's a lot of empty buildings up there. And there's also a sense of like, there's a lot of wasted potential. Well, that's, the, the waste of potential is depressing. It's also, again, it's hopeful because 
people can get on but if people up there uh, they can get on board with something they will and they'll make it brilliant and so as i say the university of sunderland is brilliant you look at the world cup england's world cup starting 11 there's two sunderland lads in there you know they're like for a club that's been like utterly crap for such a long time and so badly run there are some people inside that club doing doing pretty well if that's happening so We've yeah, and as we have a romantic, I say I've, I have a bit of an overly romanticized view. I grew up in Camden Town and thought I was the unluckiest person in the world because heaven is in, up in Sunderland. You know what I mean? And I've maintained that for a bit. And if we, but I do believe in the region very much, and and, I, and I, we we feel like it would be, you know, it, it would be that would be some legacy to being part of that. They talk it was like eight eight and a half thousand jobs if the studio goes ahead. You know. And hunt in a, just millions of pounds worth of investment and i just i'm ram, rambling on i'll stop in one second but i just i i feel that like it's good it's good for people to see that's possible young the the, the kids like our cousins who i know and the people who grow up around me look at us because you know it's me and my brother and my cousin leo and they, the little cousins who know us they're like well if those idiots can do it it just cannot be that difficult and they're right you know and and i think that like it's i, I you need to have that expectation and 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 an infrastructure because a lot of it's luck and yeah. so yeah if you can if we can help be a be a part of that happening then what an amazing what an amazing thing just just to round it off because i'm aware you know you're a busy busy man but before obviously i ask you this question if you haven't yeah. seen it yet go and watch it before yeah. listening to this question then come back and listen because yeah. obviously we don't want to give any spoilers away but as you know, as you get to the end, it's it's a perfect romantic ending of of it coming mm -hmm. full circle, isn't it? It's really emotional. Yeah. It pulls on the heartstrings, and I think it just perfectly captures what Sunderland Football Club is all about, and it's the whole reason behind doing you know a series like this, isn't it? Yeah, totally. Well, we started with Father Mark in the church because we wanted to say this is not this is you've seen football docs before, you've not seen something like this. This is about a lot more than just what's going to happen on the pitch. Um, and I feel emo every time I watch the end of it, um, I, I even now I feel emotional just talking about it. But uh, yeah, it was a hell of an ending, and it felt appropriate to end that way um, because it's a community. It is about a community, and it's you know it's a, it's a very fractured world. There are very few places where everyone can come together, and I think that you know being together with that community of people is really important. And that ending, I really think, reflects that. Um, and it kills me every time, <laughs> but I love it too. Yeah, I mean, do, is do you see that as the perfect ending, or or is there still potential? No, the, perfect ending is us winning, the perfect ending is us winning the Champions League. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and when that happens, we will be there. I promise. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, <laughs> you have touched on it there. Just the potential return to the Premier League. Would you not consider it yeah. then? Yeah, yeah, maybe we'll wait and see. I mean, we felt that we. We didn't want to. Each series has to take it on and have something new to it. Yeah. So, but if that's if that's out there, yeah. I mean, any any excuse to spend time in Sunderland is is I'll take. So, yeah. Thanks very much for joining us, Ben. That's been absolutely brilliant. We really appreciate your time. Oh yeah. Thank you for having me. And uh, have a great weekend. Yeah, just bu buzzing. You know, we're showing episode three tonight, uh, which is us winning Wembley. So. For most people in this room, they've been to Wembley their whole lives and, and they've only seen us win there once. And this is immortalising that moment. So yeah. I'm very happy to be sharing this. Perfect. I mean, <laughs> plenty, plenty of familiar faces here at night, like you see throughout all three series as well. It's, it's got a real community feel. Yes, you're just seeing a couple scooting through now. But yeah, the cast were the most important thing about this show. It's a family show. It was made by my brother, my cousin Leo, and uh, the, some of the family um, are here tonight. We had an amazing team uh, on screen. We had an amazing team off screen. Um, as you say, it's about the people and tonight's a celebration of the people. Hopefully, I think we know a bit more of a happy ending this yeah. time. So yeah, I have been uh, going over some of the old ones this week yeah. in, in anticipation. And uh, yeah, it was pretty raw, wasn't it, the yeah. previous two series. So hopefully a little bit more happiness, a few more smiles. But look, it's, it's been enthralling watching it all the way through. Um, not just for Sunderland fans, I think it's captured the imagination of a lot of people around the world. Yeah, I mean, we spoke to some of the producers, obviously, in the build-up to it. And this, yeah. To say that, that this series in particular, the ending and, and everything that follows with it, it just, it's just an emotional roller coaster, and it's ending on a high, isn't it? Yeah. Well, look, sport 
doesn't always end on a high. That's sort of why we love it so much, the drama of it. So the first two series focused on that a little bit more and, and, and the reactions of the fans and the players and, and managers as well who were involved. Um, so you'll see, we'll see a different side of it hopefully this, this, this time. But look, I, I played nearly 800 games and I think I, I won one medal in my career. So it isn't always about the highs, yeah. it's about the camaraderie and the passion of the fans and all those those good things. I was just saying, you know, season three is a, a lot better watch for a Sunderland fan. I think, you know, as a neutral, I think it's kind of engrossing regardless. Yeah. And that's why there's been three series of this commission. But yeah, it's going to be a lot easier to watch tonight. And, um, you know, suddenly getting promoted back to where we should be, or one step closer to, to where we should be is a, yeah, a big moment. You get a real of those moments as well, don't you? I know, it's because it was the dreadedness of like the first two series. It's like, you know you're watching it. And I watched the first two series, and even when, say, we went to Wembley, yeah. I'm going there and I'm, I'm putting myself, like, in my head, I'm like, okay, we're, we're going to win today. And I keep saying that, and I know the results, and it's like, it's just crushing. But yeah, obviously, you know, back to Wembley, beat Wickham, and uh, yeah, powerful. Yeah. It's uh, sullen on the up. I love going in every single day and I'm always going to say it is straightforward and easy. I think there's there's different challenges. I think I've, I've been here now for, for my sixth season and we've had different groups and with every group there's there's some really good bits and there's some really challenging bits and, um, and every season is no different and I think this season we've got a lot of potential and to, I think it's very clear the fact that when it's all um, when we get that all, all aligned, the, the, the power of this group is huge and it's our job together to, to bring that out of every single person. Uh, from, a, from a personal point of view, what I've, what I've loved is the fact that my role's probably shifted since, since the day I came in. I'm no longer the, the, the young one, I'm, I'm the old one. <laughs> um, but the way that I see it is whether you're, you're Joe Bellingham, you're, you're 17, 18, or um, you're, you're me, Critch. Um, sorry, I know Pritch's life got the fridge. It's I'm not sure. Uh, uh, you know, Skip and all, all those boys up there, is, every, every single person is, is a leader and can, and can influence. And, and it's important that in these last 15, 16 games is that everybody brings their, their individual potential, their qualities, and that's both in training and every, every, every single day that we bring that. And if we bring that, the group's powerful and we can achieve so much and, and, and we will. Hopefully it's this season, but it, it's, a, it's a really good group. Uh, we've got a lot of different characters, uh, a lot of different languages going around and as the season's gone on, we've got a lot, lot, we got a lot closer. I think at the start of the season with the, with the languages and the different cultures, it was, um, it was slightly divided, which is normal. And I think as the season's gone on, the group's got to learn a lot about each other, uh, away games and just spending more time with each other. You know, we, we invest everything every single day and we spend um, you know, just as much time with each other as we do our, our wives sometimes because we do a lot of travelling. So we're getting to know each other. The, the young boys are really coming through and they're really starting to show their talent, which is exciting. And I think it's important that with these last 15 games that everybody brings their experience, um, their own qualities, and their own potential. And, that we, and if we bring that all out, I, I really feel like we can get promoted this season. I'm never in the wedding use of bell